Hello, this is The Robots from the 1978 album Man Machine by uh, Kraftwerk. This is most likely my favorite electronic album. It's definitely the one I've studied the most. There's a ton of things you can learn from this record. It really is incredibly deep. In this video, we're going to take a look at reconstructing the bass patch from the robots on a Moog Matriarch. Technically speaking, it's not that difficult to patch, but there is so much subtlety going on that is actually pretty difficult to reconstruct. Because there is most likely already a zillion videos out there about this album and probably this patch in particular, I'm also going to talk a lot about transcribing and show you one of the ways I go about lifting synth sounds. I almost never process the audio in my videos with any EQ or effects so you hear the actual sound of the synth, but the goal of this video is to reconstruct a recorded sound, so this time I will go into a little detail about mixing, because we're lifting the sound from a record where they almost certainly use some studio techniques. As always, there's an index in the description if you want to skip around. Patch diagrams can be found at my website. There's a link in the description. Okay, before we get to the matriarch and the walkthrough, I wanted to demonstrate this patch on a few different synths. At its core, this patch is simple. Three oscillators, a resonant low-pass filter, a VCA, and some delay. But because it's so simple, you really have to listen and tweak if you want it to sound like the original. I'm pretty sure it was done on a mini Moog, at least part of it, more on that later. But anyway, have a listen to these different versions and pay attention to the differences. Well, those were clearly all very different. I used the same delay for all the patches, my old Space Echo, which I'm happy to say I finally got working at 100%, um, used that so there'd be at least one thing consistent for all the versions. When I put those patches together, I just followed the patch sheet I came up with for the Matriarch. I set the knobs on all the different synths to relatively the same positions and let her rep. Obviously that didn't work so well. I don't want to sound all preachy, but if you want to become a better musician or sound designer or learn how to work your synth, it's absolutely essential that you listen to music and study the music. In the old days when I was lifting a phrase, some harmony, or a synth tone, I'd make a tape loop and listen over and over and compare to what I was playing. Now that we're in the 21st century, you can get plugins or apps that will make your life way easier. I'm going to use this awesome plugin by Adapter Audio called Metric AB for a lot of this video. So I've got a couple of phrases from the album loaded into the B side of the plugin. So when you see B activated, you know you're listening to the original. Speaking of which, let's have a listen. Okay, so we're going to start from scratch. Put the matriarch in unison mode and VCA in amp envelope. Listening to the original, uh, we're going to start with the three oscillator voice. I'm going to start with all pulse waves for now. And I'm going to put oscillator three down an octave. Great. Okay, let's program in the sequence. It's a 32 step sequence in uh, D minor. 16th note division, so remember for the 8th rest, you got to push the rest button twice. All right, let's hear it. 
Okay, with all that talking about listening being so important, I found an error. I've been playing this song wrong for many, many years. So this is the sequence that I played in um, just now. But in the second bar, I was going down the octave a sixteenth too soon. It should go down on the and of three instead of the e of three. So I'm sure I'm going to play it wrong a couple more times because I've played this song like that wrong for so long, so you'll just have to forgive me. Okay, let's have a listen to the original again. Listen to the attack of each note. There's a real clicky envelope or percussive sound. I'll loop a small section so we can hear that better. So that ticka 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 sound is what we're going to try to figure out. So I'm pretty sure they must have layered two different synths to get that percussive attack and the bass sound. But it doesn't mean we're not going to try to do it on the matriarch. So I brought the cutoff down to around 2K and I'm making a real short amp envelope. I'm going to add in a tiny bit of filter envelope. Now the decay's got to be super short. And you can hear we're getting that click now. It's got to be a real short envelope, otherwise we're going to hear the filter open. Or especially once we add resonance, we're going to hear pitch swoops. Like that. We don't want that. So like I said, I'm pretty sure they must have used two synths or at least layered tracks to get both the consistent and bright percussive envelope click, as well as the really dark bass tone. So let's have a listen to the Matriarch's noise generator and see if we can come close to that percussive part of the sound. Nice short amp envelope. And bring the cutoff down a bit. Yeah, I think that's pretty close. So if you really want to duplicate this patch, I think that's the method you gotta do. Do some multi-tracking. Anyway, let's turn off the noise and get back to what we're working on. And we'll just stick with our envelope click for now. And with the lower cutoff, I think that's closer to the original. Oops. Yeah, keep the filter envelope really short. Key tracking's not really doing much. Okay. Next, we've got to take a look at all the filter modulation. When I first listened to this and tried to recreate it, I made the mistake of listening over and over to a two-bar phrase, and as a result was convinced that they had sequenced the filter cutoff and probably the resonance as well, which doesn't bode well for us because we don't have CV control over the resonance on the matriarch. So I tried out a patch on the subsequent 37, which can sequence both resonance and filter cutoff. It's easier to show you the sequence on the Sub37 software editor. It's a 32 step sequence that's modulating the filter resonance as well as the filter cutoff. It sounds cool, but it's too repetitive. There's not that much life there. Let's have a listen to the original again and pay particular attention to the filter modulation. I'm going to loop two short phrases so it's easier to compare. So the filter's high on beats one and two. This time the filter's higher just on beat two. Let's listen to an even longer phrase to compare. Wow, I love that resonance. Again. That screech is why I think it was done on a mini Moog. Okay, let's set up our filter in mono. I'm gonna put a dead patch into filter one and put it in parallel mode. Now we're in mono. Oh, that's clipping a bit. All right, let's see if we can get a little bit more click out of that filter modulation. No, not really. I wish the decay knob was logarithmic. I use low values all the time. We'd love to have more resolution down there. Okay, let's have a listen to filter resonance. Just gonna bring up the uh, sustain and the amp so we can hear it a bit better. And what we're trying to do is find the point at which we're just getting into self-oscillation. And I'm also trying to tune this to around an octave so I can find the cutoff point where I'll try to modulate to, or my top modulation point. The resonance sounds great there, but listen to how much of the low frequencies we've lost with high resonance like this.
So that's another reason why I think they may have layered when they recorded. They've got so much low end in their bass. So I'm going to go with a little bit less resonance than before to keep some of those lows. So like I said, I don't think they sequenced the filter modulation or resonance. I think they probably sequenced the notes like we've done and then physically played the filter and resonant knobs in real time as they recorded. Just like I'm doing now. Cool. So I'm just trying to do one beat small swoops with a bigger swoop on the on the minor thirds. Okay, I think you get the idea. But uh, let's try some different filter modulation ideas anyway. So I'm going to go out of the um, sequencer CV out into an attenuator. And out of the attenuator, I'm going to go into the cutoff of uh, filter 2. So the attenuator is controlling the amount of sequencer modulation. So the low notes will be darker and the high notes will be brighter. It's basically filter keyboard tracking, but a little bit more extreme. Okay, let's add an LFO. Why not? We'll try um, sine wave and modulate the filter. Bring up the mod wheel. Oh, there we go. And I want it to be out of time, so it's a bit random. Uh, that's okay, but let's try the actual random slewed wave. See what that sounds like. I think I like that a little better than the sine LFO. And then if I manually modulate the filter as well, oops, that's a bit much. Like I said, if I manually modulate the filter as well, I don't have to make as drastic movements. But I think in general that's too bright. Uh, let's try the uh, stepped LFO. Okay, that sounds super cool, but it's definitely a lot different from the original. Too R2-D2-ish. I'll try modulating both the resonance and the filter. Okay, let's have another listen to the original, and now we're going to listen to the delay. Let's loop that part. Sounds like an eighth note delay that's pretty bright and pan slightly to the right. Oh, that's full R2-D2 filter modulation. Okay, first I'm just going to put the spacing up in the center so we get a mono delay. Bring up the mix. Try syncing it first. Be easier to hear the divisions with less feedback, I think. There we go. So we're going for an eighth note delay. I think that's eighth notes. No, I think that's quarters. It's hard to tell, to be honest. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay, we'll put in a tiny bit of feedback. Okay, uh, that sounds good. I'm going to unsync the delay because I don't know if you've noticed, but when the matrix delay is in sync mode, it does some weird things with the stereo image. And now I'm going to turn the spacing all the way to the left. In the original, we heard it's a mono delay pan slightly to the right. Although we've got no pan controls for the matrix delay, if I have the left side delay at its fastest speed, we're just really going to notice the uh, eighth note delay on the right. Unfortunately, there's nothing we can really do about the placement on the right. It's always going to be hard panned. But it sounds good. Okay, now it's time for the most important step. We have to compare or AB the original and our patch. Again, I love this plugin because it's so easy to use and I can easy switch between many sources with just one click, but you can set up a bus or you can do this many other ways without having to buy a plugin. Anyway, let's see how our patch measures up. OK, 
Okay, it's easy to hear just how different they are when you listen back to back like that. That's kind of the point. Anyway, we're going to see if we can do something about that in a minute. But first, let's see if any of the other synths were a bit closer. With the exception of the last one, the uh, Dave Smith X4, they all had at least a few elements that were really close, especially the Sub-37, the Boog. So the point again, without being too preachy, it's so important to listen and compare. You'll learn so much. Especially if you're following a patch sheet. Patch sheets are great for general recall or for learning new things. But to get to the next level, you have to develop your ears and be able to identify what needs to be corrected. And with experience, develop your knowledge of synthesis so you can correct any issues. Remember though, if you're trying to recreate a patch like this from a recording, you'll probably never get it to 100%, but you can come really close. Anyway, back to the Matriarch. We're going to refresh your ears, hear the original, and then I'm going to live AB with the Matriarch and make corrections and try to get it closer. Okay, the most obvious difference is the original has got a lot more bass frequencies than what we've got on the Matriarch right now. So I'm going to start by changing Oscillator 3 to a triangle wave and really turning it up in the mixer. Okay, those lows are coming through a little bit better now with the triangle wave. Let's work on the tone a little bit. I'm going to switch Oscillators 1 and 2 over to saw waves. And probably bring the resonance down a bit to get a little more of those bass frequencies. Lower the cutoff. A little bit warmer. Let's compare to the original. Yeah, still need more lows. Let's bring down the resonance even more. Okay, I think the lows are better, but we've got so much more mids. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Okay, let's go with that for now. Put the delay back in and I'll do some filter modulation and we'll compare. Okay, tone-wise we're on the right track. Not perfect, but closer than it was. But now what's bugging me is the difference in attacks. The original has real sharp transients. So let's look at a couple more ways to get that percussive sound I talked about before. Keep the envelope filter modulation up but switch the VCA to split mode. The click we're hearing on the left side is the filter and VCA being modulated by the super short filter envelope generator. But now we're back in stereo. So the easiest way to fix this is just in your DAW. I'm going to use a dual pan plugin to force the mono signal. Okay, we're getting a little bit more envelope click now, but let's try another method out just to see if we can get a bit closer. Okay, so we're going to leave our VCA in split mode for now, and we're going to flip the filter into low pass mode, get rid of this dead patch. We're going to patch noise out into an attenuator. We did this earlier in the video, sort of, out of the attenuator into the um, input of uh, VCF1, and let's hear what that sounds like. Attenuator controls the volume of noise. Why aren't we hearing noise? Oh, we're getting distortion. Oh, we're getting filter modulation. I put it in the cutoff instead of the input. Okay. We're gonna, oh, I shouldn't have moved it. That was perfect. Just trying to get a little bit of air or brightness from the noise and to exaggerate the envelope click a little bit more. Oh, hear that laser beam? That's because I got filter modulation. Let's get rid of that. Oh, there we go. That sounds pretty good. And I'm going to turn up my bass sound a little bit on the preamp to get a good balance. We can filter the noise with the spacing knob. But I like it bright. I wanted that air. Okay, let's AB. Too much percussive noise. Try to shorten that up. But we may have to live with it. Oh boy, their attacks just sound so awesome.
okay, I think we're as close as we can get without using external tools or processing. The main tonal difference that I hear is in the mid frequencies. We've got a lot more energy in the 500 hertz to 2K range. The original has a lot of lows, but still has a lot of highs. So it sounds like they scooped out the mids with an EQ. That's actually a very common EQ move with uh, Moog synths. You'll hear it a lot. Moog themselves even do it on some of their demos on their website. I figured that out when I was trying to duplicate some of the subharmonicon patches by Lisa Belladonna. Anyway, instead of EQ, we could use a notch filter. In parallel filter mode, you can get a really great notch filter on the Matriarch. I spoke about that in the uh, third video in my series about the Matriarch's filter. But if they used a mini Moog, they didn't have a notch filter, and this video is already getting too long, so let's just use EQ. If you're having difficulty hearing or identifying the problem frequencies in a synth patch or in a mix, there's a bunch of visual EQ plugins out there that will now help with that. It's still better to train your ears because sometimes the visualizers don't make it that clear. If we go into layer mode on this one, yeah, now we can clearly see that there's a lot more energy in the matriarchs high mids. A nasal sound is what those frequencies are usually associated with. See what I mean? Okay, let's start carving. Okay, yeah, it sounds like, yep, yeah, about there, that's the, the trouble spot. Just widen the cue a bit, so we don't get any comb filtering. And I think we've also got some issues in the low mids, so I'm just going to take a little bit out around 400 hertz. Okay, that's sounding good. I think we might be able to cut a little bit more out around 12, but let's A, B first. Yeah, Matrix still a bit nasally, but first we're going to add a little bit of air, some highs. Uh, switch this to shelf. Around 14K. Cussive attacks coming back, and we get a little bit of air, that's good. Let's add a tiny bit of lows. Uh, switch this to a shelf as well. Around 100 hertz, and I'm going to use a high pass filter to get rid of those really low rumbly sounds. Tighten it up a little bit. Okay, let's AB. Okay, we're closer, but it's still a little bit nasally. Let's mess around with the matriarch filter and get our modulation going. Maybe that will make a difference. Oh, that's already a bit better. The lows and the highs are a lot closer now. It's just those mids. We could probably cut a little bit more out with the EQ. But let's move on. Let's take a closer look at the delay. The Matrix delay is beautiful and dark, but very different from the fairly bright delay used on the record. We need a high pass filter or EQ before our delay. We could put the filter in series mode, patch filter 2 out to a mult, patch out of the mult into a VCA input, as well as back into the input of filter 1, then out of the filter into the delay, and out of the delay into the second VCA input, but we're already using the high pass filter for noise. Oh well, so we'll have to do it with software. And this is easy peasy. Matriarch outs into your DAW or a mixer as usual. On an instrument channel or audio channel or whatever you've got the Matriarch plugged into, you're going to set up a send to an effects bus. Send the audio to the send. Put an IO plugin on the effects bus. IO is short for in and out. All pro DAWs will have this. From your IO plugin, we send the signal into the delay input on the Matriarch. We're using a mono delay, so only need one cable. Out of the delay, back into the IO plugin. Take the delay out of the back of the Matriarch and plug it into the channel where your IO plugin is plugged in. But whatever plugin you want to process the audio before the IO plugin, in this case, I'm just using an EQ. Make sure you have the delay mix knob turned all the way down on the Matriarch, and that's it. I've got the delay out of the Matriarch patched into my interface already, and now just patching from my interface into the delay input, ready to go. I'm going to use this soft tube channel strip as my EQ, which is before my IO plugin, and bring up a high pass filter and start filtering out some lows. That sounds good. That was easy. 
and the matrix delay itself doesn't really deal very well with super high frequencies so i'm gonna really boost them okay we'll a b again pay attention to the delay that works and I think we're as close as we're gonna get by using just one synth to duplicate that patch so it means we're pretty much done so thanks very much for watching I hope you learned something just gonna add some drums and jam out a bit